In this video, I'm going to continue to show some code examples from this video that I recorded a little while back where several students and I acted out some threading scenarios. So if you want to kind of visualize the threading scenarios, take a look at this video called Threads in Java. But in the video that you're watching right now, we are going to take a look at specifically wait and notify. Uh, this student was doing the wait and this student over here is doing the notify. Wait and notify in threading is really handy when you have a process that requires a lot of CPU time, but it waits on something else to complete first. Think about something like um, maybe a ride sharing application where you say, hey, uh, I'm at the airport, I need to be picked up. That, as soon as you do that, that has to send a message to any available driver. Okay. And that sending a message could send a message depending on the city you're in. If you're in a highly populated city like New York, could go to many, many drivers. And so the act of you saying, I need to start a ride is kicking off this process. In other words, it's notifying a bunch of waiting threads where the waiting threads are simply waiting on a rider to say, hey, I need a driver. And then the waiting threads will do all the work of going out and contacting or messaging the driver. So wait notify is handy in that kind of situation. Also think about photo uploading and resizing. That's another common situation. If you upload a whole album of photos and they need to be resized, it wouldn't make sense for that to happen in one process, but maybe several threads can handle that simultaneously. Uh, do it faster by making better use of the computer's hardware. So let's take a look at how a wait notify works. First, I have a running program, uh, and this is one I've already done a couple of examples from this in a previous video. I'm going to leave those examples just because I, I want to demonstrate that those that while one thread is waiting, other threads can do work. So first of all, I'm going to enable my wait thread, and then I'm going to enable my notify thread down at the bottom. So these are actually two separate threads that are communicating with each other. Let's take a look at the wait thread. So the wait thread, and don't worry about the name, I just wanted something I would remember. The wait thread is going to iterate 20 times. On the 10th time, it's going to say, now I'm waiting, and then it's going to go into a wait state. Now, wait is a little bit funny. To go into a wait state, you have to invoke the wait method on a Java object. Now, which Java objects have a wait method? The answer might surprise you, they all do. If you take a look at capital O, so in other words, the class named object, which is the Adam and Eve class, the superclass of all Java objects, th there are some methods that are defined here that are available on all objects. And you might not have noticed all of them before. You maybe you know two string, maybe you know clone or equals. Then there are all these other methods that you maybe you saw, but you never knew what they were. Well, guess what? Uh, one of them is wait. And then you can also have a wait with a timeout, which is pretty interesting. So I'm going to wait so long, but after a certain time, I'm just going to go. Uh, but nonetheless, wait is the one that we want to be aware of. So wait means I'm waiting to be notified by another thread that I may continue to work. How does another thread tell me that I may continue to work? Guess what? It invokes the notify method. And also there's one called notify all. Notify all works if you have a bunch of waiting threads and you want to tell them all to start working. Uh, notify means I just want to tell a single thread to start working. So there again, we have that scenario of a user has uploaded 100 photos. We want to resize them all. Maybe we have 50 resize threads. We do a notify all. Each of them will grab two photos and, and, and uh, and resize them. Where a simple wait notify with one notify just means we want a worker thread to be able to fall asleep and not consume the CPU while it's not working. So this is the thread that's going to be doing the waiting. Now what thread is going to be doing the notifying? Well, uh, that is this notify thread here and notice what it's doing is it is simply invoking notify on the very same object where we're invoking wait on the wait thread. This object is stored in a variable called lock3. Uh, lock3 just made that name up. And if you take a look, all it is is a plain old object. Nothing special. It's just something we can call wait and notify on. Uh, one other note, because we have two different threads accessing the same object, uh, things can get a little bit dangerous then. So we have to we have to wrap the wait and the notify in a synchronized block. And the synchronized block is using this lock3 as an object. Uh, that's just the way it works. 
Synchronized. If you're not familiar with that term, uh, I'll encourage you to watch the next video I'm going to record, uh, which is covering concurrency. That is a fairly advanced topic and one that's a little bit tricky to demonstrate, but we'll walk through that and we'll talk about what these synchronized blocks mean. Now I'm going to put a couple of breakpoints in so we can watch what happens during the wait and the notify. So I have a break at the start of the for loop, which should execute 40 times. And then I'm going to snap a, uh, I have a breakpoint also on the notify section of the notify thread. Just confirm real fast that I have both of these enabled. So we have our wait thread, we have our other threads, and then finally our notify thread. So I'm going to go ahead and choose debug as, and then Java application. And let's take a look. You see, first of all, we're in the thread that's going to iterate 20 times and then go to a wait state. So I'm gonna say, yes, I want to go to the debugger. Now, if you are programming with threads, I will tell you the debugger is your best friend. System out print line, except for what I'm doing here as a demo, system out print line will not help you debug threads. Take a look up here in Eclipse, and you notice that I have the two threads that are currently running, and I can debug these two threads separately, which is really cool. As a matter of fact, with a little control M action, I can take a look and show you that the threads that I already have running uh, are indeed running. There's some threads from the, my previous video where we had priority. We also had a sleeping thread. Uh, so those have already run. Only the ones where I have breakpoints are now stopped. So let's, th and that's really nice if you want to kind of walk through some of these threading scenarios. So let's take a look at the wait thread. And I'll take the console down to the last line. And we see that the wait thread says I'm working. Is that iteration 10? No, it's not. So it's still working. It's still working. I'll keep going here. And about the time we get i equal to 10, uh, it says, okay, now I'm waiting. Now it goes into the synchronized block. Synchronized means only one thread at a time can be in here. So it goes into the synchronized block. I'm going to continue to press the same button I've been pressing, which is F6. F6 means step over. So step over means execute this line and go to the next. Watch very closely as I press F6 here. F6. Now you see we have the mint green line, okay? Watch as I choose F6 again. The mint green line goes away because this thread can no longer do work because it's waiting. And it's going to continue to wait until it gets notified. It's gonna sit right here. Now, if you take a look up in my debug tab, notice that I um, currently have this guy selected. Line 129, which is correct, and that's where it's waiting. I can hit F6 as much as I want. Nothing is going to happen in this thread because it's currently in the wait state. Now, let's go to the notify thread, which is the other thread that is waiting. And again, that's an advantage of debugging, is you can debug each thread at your own pace. Take a look where its mint green line is. Its mint green line is on the synchronized lock three. Uh, so it looks kind of familiar. I choose F6 and take a look. We're on the notify line. Now let's watch, watch that line number 129 up above as I go ahead and say notify. Okay. And then I'm going to say, thank you very much. We're all done. If you notice up above, this thread is now on line 128. So let me go ahead and finish off the, uh, the notify thread that I'm currently in. Uh, so I'll simply say F8, resume, there we go. And now guess what? We're back to the waiting thread. Control M and we'll take a quick peek at what we already have. Uh, remember we have several threads going. We have a thread that went to sleep here. Then we have our priority 10 thread and our priority one thread. Both, all three of the threads I just mentioned, I covered in a previous video, uh, but I did want to show uh, I, I did want to show that these threads are acting simultaneously. We scroll on down a little bit and now we see, by the way, the tired thread is from the sleeping thread, so ignore that. Uh, but this is the thread that went into a wait state. It had 10, 10 iterations of I'm working. Then we showed this message to show that it's in a wait state. Uh, now it's been notified that it can come out of the wait state. Let's see what happens next. Just remember, I'm tired is the last thing you see on this console line. Okay, so we're back to our waiting thread. And I choose F6 and take a look we're back to running this loop again. And if you take a look at the console, I'll try to uh, make this a little easier to see at the bottom. If you take a look at the console, you'll see that sure enough, uh, this thread is back to working again. So F6, 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 and we'll keep going until this thread has done 20 iterations, and then we're all done, and I choose F8 to tell the program to continue to run. 
So that's a look at Wait and Notify, which are a couple of really handy utilities, especially if you're doing a lot of distributed programming and the like. Uh, I am going to run this uh, without the debugger this time. I'll just go ahead and say run Java application. And you can see that without me changing what's going on, uh, we still get our threads, although they come in a little different order because when I had a breakpoint on a thread, that essentially blocked the thread and allowed the other threads to continue to work. So we still get the same output, just in a little different order. And that's one important thing to consider with threads is many times we will get the same end result or a nearly similar same result, but we might have taken a different path to get there, especially depending on the operating system. So this is a look at wait and notify in Java. Notify all very similar. It's just going to have a series of waiting threads instead of just one. In our next video, we are going to take a look at the synchronized block and how threads can get in a deadlock situation. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.